1. Okay, so before I start, I'd like to state the things that happened in this house are so crazy. They may seem hard to believe, but I write everything with no exaggerations. I'm always nervous to share my story because I'm scared they'll know I'm thinking about them. A lot of my memory living in the house is gone due to trauma, but I'll tell the experiences I do remember. Backstory. When I was ten, nine years ago, my family moved to London for my dad's job offer. We lived there for three years. The house we moved into was built in the late 19th century, 1870, by a famous British architect. It consisted of three floors with telephones on each floor connecting to the outside. The street my house is on is a historic landmark. There's even a ghost tour which goes down my street, where one of the houses was haunted by a poltergeist. Experience 1 Our first day in the house, my mom told us we would have a sleepover in the living room to celebrate moving in. My mom recently told us she wanted us to stay together the first night because she could sense how evil the house was. That night, my mom came running out of the bathroom screaming, a rap had crawled up her pants and bit her leg. She had to get a rabies shot the next day, and we placed rat poison throughout the house as it was infested with them. Experience 2. Constant. Things started to get weird when the fire alarm would go off every night at 3am. Yep, start of witching hour. And it sometimes wouldn't stop after trying to disarm it. Experience 3. Constant. Through the house... We would hear faint voices and laughing during the daytime. And at night, these laughs turned into screams. At the time, our parents told us it was just foxes outside, but recently told us they had just said this so we wouldn't be scared. The screams were evil and like someone was in pain. When me and my sisters would play around with the telephones, we would hear voices coming from the outside intercom. Experience 4. Constant. We all had nightmares every night. I had a recurring nightmare of a lady pushing a little girl on the swings, and then she would turn around and her face looked so evil. She had crazy hair, corpse-like skin, big eyes, and a huge grin that reached across the width of her face. I'd wake up terrified, like I just literally saw a ghost. My older sister told me that she would have nightmares as well. She knew she was dreaming, and in order to wake up from her nightmare, she would have to hold my family's hands in a circle and sing worship songs. Experience 5 In my room, I had these tall closet doors. I always imagined a tall black figure just standing in my closet. I never saw it, but I knew it was there. Sometimes at night, I would hear tapping from inside the closet door that came in patterns. Experience 6. Constant. Precious items throughout the house, money, wedding ring, laptop, would go missing and then randomly show up later. The money my sister kept inside her safe and hid the key to went missing. Experience 7. Hallucination. One night when I was trying to go to bed, I heard my mom from downstairs crying, Please leave. I have children. Please just leave. When I explained to her what happened and asked her if someone had broken in the next day, she was so confused and said no. She had no memory of the event, but it seemed so real. She sounded so desperate, and I remember it vividly. Experience 8 My mom and I were setting up the dining room table when my younger sister runs in and tells us of the little girl she's made friends with in her room and how they play together. When my mom freaked out, my sister said, Oh, don't worry, she's not bad. She began having hallucinations in her room at night of a man yelling at a little girl in a very deep voice. It freaked her out so much she started sleeping with me in my room. We stayed on the third floor. Aggression begins, experience nine. My mom would bath me and my sister together, and after we were done in the bath, she would grab a towel, wrap us in them, and pick us up out of the tub. One time, after she'd taken my younger sister out, she picked me up and then tripped, causing us to crush my sister onto the bathroom floor. We laughed it off, but my mom seemed freaked. She told us recently that she felt something push her. Experience 10. We all began to feel slight touches and pushing. 
Whenever I would walk up the stairs to my room, I would always feel something close behind me, chasing. So I started running up every time. Experience 11. I think, for a time, the demons became attached to us as well as the house. One day when I was at school, I started hearing what sounded like multiple voices laughing at me, saying things like, You can't do it! Pathetic! I started crying, and my teacher said I was having an anxiety attack. But the voices were so clear and loud, like they were right beside me. I think it was the demons messing with my head. Going back through old photos, very disturbing pictures of the spirits have been caught photobombing. We're all good and happy, but I will never forget that house. Two. So I know this sounds super weird. I never even believed in ghosts until this shit happened, and I'm not writing a long text like this for fun. So hear me out. Me and my family live in a very old, big farmhouse that's been here for generations. Loads of fucked up stuff happened here. We have a history of violent men in my family. Now, we always had some strange stuff going on, like scary noises and things breaking. But I always told myself that the house was just old, so this stuff means it doesn't happen. It doesn't mean anything. I also started to lose stuff and then find it again in the strangest places. Like putting my phone on the kitchen table, then finding it later under my pillow in my bed. Like, WTF, you don't put stuff there on accident. Then even weirder, there was the case of the doors being mysteriously locked. I walk into a room to get something, turn around, and the door was fucking locked. And I had to get my keys from my cupboard to get back out. One time, I even had to climb out of a window because I didn't have my keys with me in my room. One time, I also woke up in the middle of the night because I felt like something had pulled my leg. That was a common one. And when I turned on the light, my closet was standing in the middle of my room. I was absolutely puzzled. My closet is really heavy. I can't even move it by myself, and even if you move it with two people, you usually end up pushing it over the floor where it leaves scratches. However, there were no scratches. I started to accuse my parents of playing jokes on me. They have a strange kind of humor sometimes, but they swore they didn't do it. My mom even confessed to me that she had experienced some strange stuff as well and promised to call her sister, who had a friend who would do cleansing of haunted houses, etc. However, before the friend had time to come over, my parents went on vacation, and finally, I was alone for an entire week. And shit just kept happening, even though I was definitely alone. I started to get really paranoid. Always checked the front doors twice, slept with a baseball bat next to my bed. As if that helped with a ghost, but okay, stuff like that. I remember lying awake in the middle of the night, scared shitless, super tired, but my heart racing too fast to fall asleep when suddenly a bright light appeared on the ceiling over me and I heard a voice telling me, What are you afraid of? You're the most dangerous entity in this house. I was like, what the fuck? Who just talked to me and what on earth did they mean by this? I didn't hear the voice again, but I felt suddenly very calm and was able to fall asleep. I was still a bit in denial. So the next day I told myself it was a fever dream. However, the next time the ghost or whatever crashed a vase in the room I was in, I actually wasn't afraid anymore. I just started to get really pissed off. I started to yell at it, or where I thought it was, and tell it to fuck off and never come back, or I would get really angry. I wasn't even sure what I was threatening it with. I mean, how do you threaten a ghost? I remember that I felt very warm and like my body was buzzing with energy and then nothing. Everything was calm. The activities never came back after my rant. However, when my parents returned, my mom still invited that woman over to check the house. She was a very confident, bubbly lady. But after she went into every room, she seemed a bit off. She gave me a very strange look 
holding her distance from me, and then said to my mom, There used to be a polar guy staying here that caused the trouble, but he got scared off by something bigger. It means no harm to you. You don't have to worry about it. It protects the house. I don't think I'd be able to remove it anyways. My mom looked confused, but trusted her opinion, thanked her, and sent her home. Nothing ever happened since then, but now I really wonder what exactly happened, and what I am, if you know what I mean. Anybody experience something like this? Seriously. 3. I'll start off by saying I am agnostic and typically not very superstitious, but when you see and hear things and others around you report the same thing, it's hard to ignore that, you know? That being said, even if ghosts and such were real, they're just humans that are trapped or confused or curious, right? So there's no reason to be afraid, they don't want to hurt you. Demons, on the other hand, well, it's better to be safe than sorry, I think. I'm a security officer for a military software company, that I've been working at for over a year now, and only recently have weird things started happening. Before now, my co-workers had reported oddities, but the only thing I had experienced was the toilets flushing on their own and lights flickering. But I just chalked that up to electronic oddities. Can you imagine my surprise when I heard a loud bang up on the fourth floor as if something heavy fell onto a hard floor? And I did another set of full rounds for that floor and couldn't find anything. The floor up there is carpeted anyway, so I have no idea how a noise like that is even possible. If that was the only encounter, then I'd probably just ignore it, but that's just the beginning. Next encounter was at the end of a set of rounds. There's a glass pane in front of the door I come out of that reflects my desk before I actually turn the corner and see it. And through that I saw a completely black figures sitting in my chair. Their head was well above my monitor despite sitting down, so I'd estimate that they were at least seven feet tall. And of course, as soon as I turned to look at the desk proper, the figure vanished. And when I looked back at the glass, it was gone in the reflection too. Needless to say, that freaked me out a bit. A few days after that, I was on the second floor when I started seeing flashes of something white moving in my peripheral view. I could never get a good look at it, and when I asked it to go away, it did, and I haven't seen it since. This one in particular seems to be the most common. Multiple co-workers have reported seeing a white streak run across the camera or in the corner of their eye. They've also reported footsteps and voices, but I have never heard anything like that. Anyway, on the same set of rounds that I saw the white flashes, I looked out a window, still on the second floor, and saw the same seven feet black shadow man standing in the parking lot. It was only there for a split second, and when I tried to look at him, it vanished instantly. But I felt a very foreboding and menacing presence coming from it, that I didn't feel from whatever the white figure was. The last noteworthy thing is that on the fourth floor, I felt something touch my back. But that one very well could have been my shirt shifting weird or something. The thing that concerns me the most is a friend suggested that the black figure could very well be a demon. Especially seeing as it only manifested on the ground, and I got that sense of malice. Four is also considered a demonic number. As Lucifer was the fourth angel introduced in the Bible, or at least that's what they said, the fact that it's the fourth floor that I may have gotten poked, and that's where the loud noises were, has me concerned. Again, I can deal with ghosts, but I really don't like the idea of a demon wanting to do something with me. Is there anything I can do to determine what kind of haunting I'm dealing with? My current guess is that the black figure is a demon, and the white figure is a spirit. But I don't have nearly enough knowledge on the subject to say for sure. 4. When I was at university in Australia, I took a couple of years off my studies and moved from Melbourne to Sydney to work for a non-profit. 
This particular not-for-profit had for years been given the use of a really old run-down office in an almost derelict building. Thing was, it was in the middle of Sydney, so the location was great. We had little money to run the organization, so we were thankful for the space. One stifling, hot, and humid summer evening, I was working back really late. It must have been about 2 a.m., and I was in a room at the back of the office. There was a long hallway connecting where I was working with the front of the office. Given how old the office was, there was no air conditioning. I had all the windows open to catch any breeze and try to stay cool. I remember working and sweating. Then it happened. I was tapping at a computer when I was suddenly encircled by a freezing cold. The temperature felt like it fell by 30 degrees Celsius in a second. I hugged myself against it. There was frost in my breath when I exhaled. It was 100% like the sixth sense. Then I shot up straight in my chair as I had an overwhelming sensation that someone was behind me. I knew someone was there looking at me. Even typing this, I have the same chill pulsing through my body like I did that night. My first thought was that someone had broken in and I was about to be attacked. Spinning quickly around in my chair, I looked behind me, but no one was there. I called out to hear if anyone would reply. Nothing. I called my colleagues' names, thinking that perhaps one of them had come into the office to work. Again, nothing. Slowly, I got up from my chair and started checking all the rooms of the office. I walked down the hallway to the front of the office to check if the front door was locked. It was. Sitting in reception, I shook the feeling of unease off as best I could, and started heading back down the hallway to recommence working. When I got to the end of the hallway, the same feeling hit me. I absolutely knew that someone was behind me and they were looking at me. I froze and decided to spin around quickly to confront whatever or whoever was there. That's when I saw him. He was a little boy, perhaps five or six years old. He was only visible from the head to where his legs began. His legs were not there. He was kind of see-through, but I could definitely make him out. We made eye contact. He smiled at me, turned to his right and kind of ran off, disappeared. I was in shock. I could not believe what I had just seen. I had worked in that office for months. Nothing like this had happened before. I didn't know what to do, but I no longer felt afraid. He was, well, I guess a nice little kid. He just wanted to say hi, is what I thought. I then said out loud, Hi there. I've nearly finished. I'll be heading off soon. I wasn't expecting a response, and I didn't get one. I finished up and left the office, saying goodbye as I locked the front door. Months later, I was at a pub where several generations of people who had worked at the same non-profit, in that office, had gathered for a kind of reunion. As the night proceeded around the table, about a dozen of us all retold our stories of the little boy that haunted the office. We all instinctively, unquestionably knew he was a young boy, all of their stories were as visceral as mine. It was then that I found out the little boy had been given a name. His name was Ravi. Five. Two years ago, I took my wife, my father and son, then three, to visit family in rural New England, America. They live on a small farm with buildings that date back to the 1700s, which have been restored and modernized and a guest house which was built about 20 years ago. My cousin is a prolific photographer, and my auntie had decorated most of the rooms in the main house and guest house with her photos. We didn't notice much about the photos in the guest house when we first arrived, probably because we were all jet-lagged. The next morning, after a sound night's sleep, we were sitting in the main family room eating breakfast and making plans for the day, when I noticed that my son was keeping his head down and not answering my father whenever he spoke to him, which was unusual because even at that young age, they were very close. I looked over to my dad and noticed that he was sitting in front of a photo of a room in a run-down house. 
The room had a large window with sunlight streaming in, casting shadows across the length of the room towards a dark corner. I got an uneasy feeling from the photo, but didn't think much more of it. We finished breakfast and all got up from the table, and I noticed my son was walking in a wide arc around the end of the table where my father had been sitting. Again, weird behavior, but I just dismissed it as a weird three-year-old thing. Over the next day or so, I noticed him becoming more and more uneasy any time we were at the dining table, and doing whatever he could to avoid looking at the photo. I decided to ask him what was wrong, and he answered me very matter-of-factly. The Batman in the picture is looking at me. He's very cold and he's not nice. I looked back at the picture and got instant chills down my spine. There was no man in the picture but I got the feeling there was more to it than an empty room. I decided to ask my cousin about the picture, and she told me that it was taken at an abandoned farm a bit further upstate. It was one of her favorite pictures, but had always given my aunt the creeps, so it was moved to the guest house. Over the next couple of days, whenever I would ask my son about it, he would say things like, The bad man is looking at me. He doesn't like me. He wants to hurt me. I didn't think much of it until we were going to bed one night, and my son tripped and fell, seemingly for no reason, in the middle of the hall, and started crying hysterically. When I asked him if he was okay, he said, The bad man hurt me on the leg. I checked his leg, and sure enough, on the side of his leg there was a large bruise that looked like it had been struck with a blunt object. I didn't want to play into his fears, but asked him, how the bad man could hurt him if he was in the photo downstairs near the table. His answer was enough for me to pack up all our shit and move to the main house with my aunt and uncle, cousins, and big burly housekeeper right away. He's not down there. He comes up here when we go to bed. We left soon after, so I never found out anything more about the farm where the photo was taken. But I'm sure there was some kind of evil presence around it. Anyone experience something similar? Please share if you have. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to 5 True Paranormal Stories, episode 226. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. If you enjoyed the video, then please do give it a like, by booping or getting your cat to do it. If you don't have a cat, a dog would be acceptable. If you don't have either of those, then possibly a bearded lizard might work. Mm. It's untested, so we'll see, we'll see. Uh, also, uh, leave a comment and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Okay, dog, let's see, what day is this? This is a Friday. Oh, last episode of Falcon and Winter Soldier. Right, lovely. Uh, I, will, I will watch that as a treat if I'm a good boy and get my work done on time. Uh, not sure about streams today. I might plow on and get the next couple of videos done if I can uh, which will give me a lazier Saturday so we'll like we'll try to do the regular gaming stream we'll do a split stream between No Man's Sky and Phasmo uh, as I usually do on Saturday not sure what time it starts at probably about 10 p.m. UK time unless I get really really bored and start it early okay and with that I'm gonna head off for now so until next time thank you very much for listening and take very good care of yourself.